welcome back to the Playing With Power podcast, the mature Nintendo Power retrospective, the unofficial one, not to be confused with apparently the new Nintendo Power podcast, which... <laughs> Please you know, also... Yeah, one of you can let us know how it is and let us know like how better we are. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right after they let us know how ironic it is that we put mature in our title. <laughs> And that what, you're, what you're hearing is my special two guests. We are having Ivan. Hello. And the return guest appearance of John. <laughs> yeah, what, is, it, is it like, is it, uh, am I a guest or just like a host in hiatus or something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> host emeritus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tempor- temporary return host. <laughs> Ben was uh, Ben needed a stand-in for the night, and I said, "Oh, it's Friday night. Well, I don't have anything going on in my life, so <laughs> sure." <laughs> oh yes, and uh, today's issue we are covering is issue eighty-five, which is June of nineteen ninety-six. Yep, and uh, quite a spectacular. It's the N sixty-four blowout, <laughs> which. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure John's got a taco joke in there. Yeah, that. I was going to say, when, usually when there's a blowout, it involves uh, <laughs> Taco Bell or, you know, Chipotle. I don't know. <laughs> or, or you know, dating and uh, driving home, the girl's tires give out on you. There's always those kinds of blowouts, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad to know that... Uh, Good to have you back, too. Are... <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, or a blowout could be like uh. a... Like a glory hole, like tape on Pornhub, maybe. <laughs> uh, yes. I'm back, everyone. But, uh, <laughs> <yay>. <laughs> on the cover, we have Mario. Mm. And uh, we were discussing Super Mario 64, as well as Blast Core, Pilot Wing 64, Shadows of the Empire, Goldeneye, never heard of it, Cruising USA, and more. <laughs> Yeah, we got Mario sitting on a Nintendo 64 box and looking oh so happy about it. Yeah, well, that that's, the corner of that cube is doing him no favors, so... <laughs> well, I, I don't know. His <laughs> facial expression tells me otherwise. <laughs> well, it's making him go cross-eyed. Like, Mamma <laughs> mia! I was, I was told this was going to be a Nintendo 69! <laughs> It went for the spaghetti wah. and it got the meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I got nothing. And then, yeah, it's, so it's it's Peach promised me a cake, not this. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's like from the first world in Mario sixty four, where the big you know uh, cannonballs go down the mountain at you, is what's in the background. <laughs> like, at least. Yep. Is that a euphemism? Was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she came in like a wrecking ball. Um, <laughs> and then what else do we have? In-depth coverage of Olympic Summer Games and Toy Story, as well as Dragonheart and Sword of Hope 2 in the Epic Center. And uh, Griffey Contest, Winner Plays Ball. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So, on the inside cover, we have a ransom note with uh, some words cut out, like, if you want... Blanks fireball, new fireball yeah, attack, attack, push, blah, 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 uh, while blah, 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 simultaneously pressing blah, blah, blah. So it's sort of like, okay, so. your information on your games are being withheld from you unless you get the Nintendo official Nintendo playing guides. So Yep, this, uh, this, game, this gameplay footage is being redacted. It looks like the letters so, after I uh, cut them up for the ransom notes for the kids in my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, you gotta you gotta pay those bills somehow. The the, the best part is taking like a toe to send it as <laughs> proof of life. That little kid toe goes right in the envelope. It's so adorable. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that was one of those things like I was you know, like, remember Clippy when you were typing when you were on Word? <laughs> it looks like you're smashing your head against the keyboard, would you like some Right, help? or it looks like you're writing a ransom note. <laughs> you should ask for more money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I like, I like it. If, like, if, if what you're typing in gets too depressing, it's like, it looks like you're trying, it looks like you're attempting suicide. Would you like some help? <laughs> and you're like, what, what exactly do you mean? Like, you mean like help, like talking me out of it or making sure my grammar's good when I express who's, who's the, who's the blend? If I could set yours to help you, I would. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and then let's see. Power has more N64, so it's saying they're going to have some a bunch of exclusive previews of the new Nintendo 64 games. Oh, we got a picture of Mario and Bowser. Mario's looking pleased as punch, and Bowser looks like he's just fucking laced up. Like he smoked a joint late for PC. <laughs> yeah, Bowser. <laughs> Bowser ate like way too many tabs of acid. That's what's going on there. Like. That's why Mario's smiling because he gave him a joint saying like, "Here, this will mellow you down," and and now like it's kicking in, and Mario's just like, oh, "You're someone's gonna have a bad night." <laughs> Bowser's a tripping balls, Mamma Mia! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he seriously looks he looks coked out of his mind. Mm-hmm. And then on the next page, there's one of the Blast Core uh, people. I think that's who that is. Really? It looked like Pinocchio. It does, but I'm pretty sure it's one of the characters from Blast Core. Wow, Blast Core really did a rip off of Pinocchio, man. <laughs> and uh, we've got some very legible contents here. A white background with some uh, black and red font. Very legible, which is yeah. better than some of the uh, the Magic Eye covers that we've had to deal with before. Well, you just wait. There's some Magic Eye bullshit later on in the issue. <laughs> Someone's right ahead. <laughs> Well, you know, so, some people do prep, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember that back when I was young and new at this, and then I learned. <laughs> so we see. I did prep. The, uh, apparently, <laughs> I was busy editing other stuff. Right. So we've got the Olympic Summer Games. Take aim and jump, sprint and vault to Olympic gold and black pearls. Olympic Summer Games for the Super NES. They're still making Super NES games. Uh, apparently these are, you know, yeah. the tail end. Yeah, and uh, then Ken Griffey Jr.'s winning run, the road to the World Series, begins in the front office. Check out the winning trade strategies. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't tell what the fuck is going on in that screenshot. <laughs> That's incredible. It's yeah, like it's they took bad. it at dusk. <laughs> <laughs> The only thing that's not orange, a deep orange or entirely black, is the green uniform of the batter. Yeah, which is kind that's of funny. Amazing. Because Rare made that game, so it actually looks pretty good when you're actually playing it. But mm. <laughs> uh, And then we got Lufia 2 Rise of the Sinistrals, part two of the epic coverage. So Lufia 2 part two? <laughs> yeah. I always read that's it as Lufia. Lufia. By the way, I never see the Lufia. <laughs> Do you have a Lufa, Mike? Uh, no. Hmm. It's a. I use it. Sorry. Hmm? Sorry. Uh, I I just use a cloth. What about you? I I have a Lufa and a cloth. Yeah. Hmm. Good times. All right. Uh, mm. Retractable shower head for me. You gotta get. Ooh, the lady of the house ooh. prefers that one apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she hates it. Oh. I don't. <laughs> It cleans all, it well, cleans all the naughty bits. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as someone's getting your uh, use out of it. <laughs> so, moving on to the player's pulse. The first thing we're greeted by is this epic Mario Batman crossover. <laughs> it's pretty good. Two-Faced oh, Bowser yeah, in the background. Yeah, Two-Faced Bowser. That's nice. Oh, and he's got a bullet bill gun. This is amazing. He's got the logo in the background, which... Uh, it looks like a Goomba with a with like a massive dong. I'd rather watch that than the the Schumacher films. So yeah. oh god, yeah. <laughs> you know, looking at the way Bowser is, it looks like they clearly took inspiration from that. But as long as Bat Mario doesn't have nipples, I'm I'm good. I would prefer with nipples. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> and then we've got. Uh, Yoshi from Yoshi's Island, and uh, he, uh, I can't say this any other way, he's presenting. <laughs> I don't know if they're both presenting. Like, <laughs> Baby Mario has like, baby a Mario. sexy baby pose going on. <laughs> 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 That's the one Halloween costume you don't see. Like, the, uh, the sexy baby. You just don't see girls doing that too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And then the bottom left, we have a uh, transformation uh, someone's drawn. Really awesome uh, transition from the, all the Mario games. So he's gone, you know, the blocky 8-bit Mario, and they've kind of rendered Mario 2, Mario 3, and the, snoo- the Snooky Tail, and then Super Mario World uh, Mario. And, they, like, the, just the, the quality of the drawing for each one is... Like, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's, that's solid uh, art artwork there. Yeah. Yeah, and he's asking, where's my Ultra 64 Bits clone? Yeah. So, you know, he's coming. <sighs> and uh, so our first letter says, Hi, ratings? I love your magazine. I just switched over from GamePro to your magazine because I, along with many people, think that Nintendo products rule over all other video gaming products. But there's one thing I would like to see in you magazine. A rating system. If you added one, your magazine would be flawless. Keep up the good work. From Giancarlo Dazzi via American on- Online. And he says, take a look, and they say, take a look back at the now playing section, Giancarlo, where our fearless staff members pick their favorite games every month. You'll also see the power meter ratings as determined by our game testing department. These folks there read each game in four categories, graphic and sound, play control, challenge, theme, and fun. But apparently they failed in readability. <laughs> Giancarlo just wants a number like everyone else. Like, rate it. How many, uh, <laughs> four out of how many, you know, out of how many stars or whatever, however it is, you know? <laughs> just make it yeah, simple for me. Yeah. How many plungers is this <laughs> game, is this Mario game? <laughs> make me a bicycle, clown! <laughs> Alright. Uh, so the next letter All right, is from Jose Sol- Solaranzo from Metairie, Metairie, Louisiana. Um, and let's see, he says, I would like to start saying that Virtual Boy is awesome. Oh, he's losing me. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's like nothing else in the market. I play some Yeah, that's for that's sure. True. Yeah. Not a, what else can you strap to your face to give you seizures? All right, I placed an order for a Virtual Boy. Besides, besides some very unshaven Arabian goggles. Hmm. Yeah, I had a roommate in college that had epilepsy. We would hide a, like a, a pulse light in his room just to mess with him. Oh no! <laughs> anyway, uh, I placed an order for a virtual play a month and a half before it came out. My wait was over when the st- and the store called me at work and said, "Wow, he has a job." All right, when the store called me at work and said my virtual boy had arrived, after the call, time went very slow. Oh god, it's like ugh. all right. I so his day went long. I rushed to pick it up uh, along with three games: Tolera Boxer, Galactic Pinball, and Red Alarm. After Finished after reading the manual. Uh, put my head into three dimensions, and boom! The experience was mm. better than expected. It ruled. I chose the Virtua Boy over two 32 bit systems because I have poor judgment. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, the Virtua it. Boy is unlike any other system. When the Nintendo 64. That, that doesn't mean good! <laughs> when the Nintendo 64 comes out. The two thirty-two bidders are going to be old toys. Why is he numbering and they wo- <laughs> the stuff? And they won't be alone. I'm patient. Oh, I'm patient for the sixty-four because good things come to those who wait. Uh, God, he's such a fanboy. I was wondering if you guys could email me information about Virtual Boy games and possible release dates, as it's not going to be canceled. Uh, or discontinued <laughs> in a few months. <laughs> yeah, by the time this yeah, letter well, is published. <laughs> I think that's why he's asking for it to be emailed because even he can tell it's not going to be covered in the magazine oh. anymore. All right, let's see. They say thank you for the plot. It's Jose. Upcoming Virtual Boy titles include Dragon Hopper and Bound High. Dragon Hopper will combine action and puzzle elements, while Chalvo, the high stepping star of Bound High, will remind Kirby fans of their favorite ma- round mound of rebound. That's not Kirby, that's. That's Charles Barkley, but all right. But the date release. Also, the round mound of rebound looks for the people I find on OKQ. Uh, oh wow! Do you are you Facebook friends with Jen Myers? She's one of your one of your friends, right? The name sounds. Familiar. She's like a comic from like on from Niagara area, I think. Possibly. And she posts, like, the nasty stuff guys send her on Tinder and OkCupid. Okay it's, like, the funniest <laughs> shit. Anyway. For the most up-to-date info on all the games, check out Packwatch in every issue. All right. Ivan, what's next? All right. 
So the next one comes to us from Andrew Clown, Indianapolis, Indiana, Arena Admirer. What do I think of the changes to Arena? I think they're great. The battle zone is an excellent idea. Now we can see which part of the power region sent in the most points. <laughs> yeah! Arena Online? Awesome! Points don't matter. <laughs> God, can't stand this. I can now see all of the all-time records without having to dig through 15,000 issues. Not only do I like the changes to the arena, I also like the changes to the rest of your mag. I was hoping you could fix up classified info. The style you had was getting old and boring because it was basically the same look you always had. Thank you for adding another page to the player's pulse. Other than game reviews, player's pulse is arguably the most important part of your mag. Well, thanks for the changes. Okay. Wow. Well, here we got Canada Online. In the Volume 82 Player's Pulse, Lamont Johnson asked if you could expand Epic Center. Your suggestion was to go to Nintendo Power Source on America Online and find tips and stuff there. But what if you live in Canada? I still want to get tips and stuff, but I can't because I don't belong to America Online. And that was from Jordan, spelled in the fucking goofiest way possible, <laughs> Giordan. Robertson via the internet to which they reply AOL recently expanded into Canada well why didn't they call it North America online huh <laughs> <laughs> to sign uh, up check the directions under the phone directory on page 9 we all know Canada's just USA Junior it all fits under the same umbrella look America <laughs> is Canada's shorts right <laughs> No, we're, we're the, we're the no, cock and, and balls, and no, all right? Yeah, that's, we where, got that's Florida where, to prove America's it. where the meat is kept. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has told Canada to tuck their Florida in yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John, John, tell us about Killer Instinct. Okay. So, what is with this high... T I guess maybe these are things that have been posted online. I'm not sure what's going on. All right, anyway. Uh, Kelly James Griffin... Which, whenever you put your middle name, you're a serial killer. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, <laughs> writes, I saw Killer Instinct 2 in Volume 81. From what I saw, I have only one thing to say. Crappy. It totally looks... <laughs> wow. It absolutely looks 16-bit. Not only that... They printed that one? Also, the characters look totally unoriginal, and only a couple of new characters have been added, and they look like messed up rehashes. Well, this guy's a troll. Plus... <laughs> you said there was some new three animation feature for the hair, yet the hair looks the same as in Killer Instinct One. So he got on there. Is not, oh, it's not, not hi. Impressed. It's Killer Instinct. So it's K I. Yeah. All right. That looks like an H. That's like terrible use of font. <laughs> it is an absolutely terrible choice of font. And uh, we've got some interesting artwork. We've got Ryu from Breath of Fire looking really cool. And then we've got a Mech Warrior envelope, which really looks like someone just smeared baby poop on a blue envelope. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got Mega Man X showing Buzz Lightyear what a real fucking robot looks like. Looks like and fucking... He's, and he, and he, looks he's like... taunting him, saying, come on, spaceman, and he's got like a fucking dust buster on his arm. Looks like fucking Voltron. <laughs> Yay. Look, a Mega Man, a Mega Man Voltron, I would watch that show. Yeah, and, and then we've got uh, some Chrono Trigger artwork, which uh, is pretty darn good. So, KI2 thumbs up. When I first saw KI2 in your magazine, I thought it would stink. Then I played it. Couldn't believe it. The animation was smooth. The Jago's hair was moving. Wow, we've got some uh, we've got some diverse opinions here. The colors were perfect. I was amazed. It wasn't the piece of crap I expected. Man, they're still using the word crap. God, Nintendo yeah. was a lot more lax in their censorship than I thought. Well, you know, they're going Nintendo hard. Gail is taking the month off. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Miller from Tonawanda, New York. Mm -hmm. All right. Moving on to Jennifer Spurgeon via the internet. Like a Spurgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Spurgeon for the very yeah. first time. Vision for the very yeah. Uh. All right, I have had a chance to play Ki Two in the arcade, and I think it was overall a pretty awesome game. 
It was a lot harder than KI, but I still liked it a lot with all the new moves. February's KI2 article was informative and very helpful. And let's You're see. Very polite of her. The last Killer Instinct take. Oh wow, there's like a, there's a lot more of this. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> what happened? Maybe we'll skip ahead. Oh my god. Uh, Killer Instinct to Yahoo. Oh my gosh, Killer Instinct. In volume 82, you asked us if we had a chance to play KI2 in the arcade and if we liked it. Did I like it? I hated it. Not. It was the best. Wow. You guys probably couldn't make a better game. That's not dated. That's Aaron? like a dated letter by five years at this point. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone clearly likes Wayne's World. I mean, who doesn't? But... Or was it? Uh, mm. Or wait, who came up with it first? Was it Wayne's World or uh, Bill and Ted? Oh did wow, that's a good not, question. Was I think like... it was Wayne's World that did not. I don't think that yeah, was Bill and Ted. You're probably well, right. But now I got to watch them all again to answer this question. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was from Aaron K. I. Hoffel from Defiance, Ohio. Defiance, Ohio. Is that an Oregon Trail? Sounds like it. No, that's Fort Defiance. All right. Uh, Mike's mom writes in uh, Tag Team Boredom. <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> from Brian Mackey in McKinney, Texas. I'm writing to tell you. About my PlayStation. It sucks. To get it, I sold crack and my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I made two hundred It really is from Mike's mom. Who knew? And seven and seventy five cents. A quarter at a time giving BJ's. Alright. Um <laughs> I sold my Super NES and my games and put in an extra two hundred. And that's just for the PlayStation. No games. Just a sorry demo disc. I wish now I had kept my Super NES, because I see all these cool games for it, and all the games for the PlayStation have weird graphics, and they are so boring. Galaga for my Game Boy is more fun than any of them. Oof, that's rough. Have you seen their two-player deal, where you need two TVs, two PlayStations, the two-player hookup, and two copies of the same game? If you've got an extra $10,000 in a big room, like you're in the movie Blank Check, you can play a two-player game, like Wipeout. Or you might have more fun sharpening 10,000 pencils. That actually does sound kind of fun, if I had, like, OCD. All right, uh, I'm warning everyone. The only thing you're not ready for is getting rid of your Super NES. Well, I gotta go. I've still got 9,999 9, pencils to go. Brian Mackey, you're a fucking legend. I love you. Sticking the shaft in the hole. Over and over and over. But that, that, you, uh, unfortunately, history will not look fondly on you because PlayStation wipes it, wipes its balls all over Nintendo. <laughs> but, all right. mm. And, and people aren't using pencils much. Mm. Alright, so, so, moving on to Super Yoshi's Island. Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island is the best side scrolling game I've ever played. The graphics are the best I've seen for a Super NES Mario game as well as the animation, which is almost as smooth as Donkey Kong Country. I'd say it's smoother than Donkey Kong Country. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Putting in the FX2 chip was a great idea for the huge bosses and scaling effects used throughout the game. I'd have to say my favorite boss is Raphael the Raven. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Let's see. Uh, yes, he's from Alabama. Anyway, <laughs> since the whole... Whole screen rotates 360 degrees with no slowdown. When I first heard about Yoshi's Island, I thought it was just another Mario game. Boy, was I wrong. When I rented it, I got blown away. I had to buy this awesome game. It was and then I played the game. <laughs> it was totally genius to make percentages on the levels to obtain a bonus stage at the end of each world. This made the replay value very high. I am completely overwhelmed by the dedication and hard work you put into this game. You guys made me realize how fun platform games can be. Give my compliments to Mr. Tezuka, Mr. Miyamoto, and Mr. Yamo Yamo yeah. Yamauchi. Yamauchi. Thank you. And keep making the greatest video games possible. Signed, Ryan Barrett. A lot of these letters are like, is it just me or is the late 90s more conversational? And like, it's sort of like... The letters before, you know, that now it's been mostly like coherent, what edited thoughts, but like it's kind of just they're kind of drifting into stream of consciousness, like they're an internet message board or something. <laughs> the age of the internet, America Online taking over. Yep. 
Uh, and we got some envelope art, which uh, Chrono Trigger, not the, uh, not the best Chrono Trigger art we've seen in this, uh, the, even this issue. Yeah, I think you've overlooked the better artwork on this page. Check out the glare that Super Mario, baby Super Mario, is giving that Koopa. Yeah, there's a watermark of baby Mario, which looks oh, like wow. it was drawn in like some, uh, some like se- uh, some seventies discount backdoor comic shop where they printed like really really vulgar shit <laughs> this looks like it was drawn from that we've got like baby Bowser and Mario just staring at each other in the watermark and uh well we've got some excellent Killer Instinct 2 artwork with some great use of shading and lighting mm. alright so the next letter says thanks for the help I am one of the lucky ones who has been subscribing to your mag since day one. Oh, try podcasting you been... the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, you've been printing letters that made me realize how cool your mag really is. I am happy to see in each and every one of your issues the absence of video game ads. Most ads are of games I won't ever consider buying. Another plus on your part is that I only own Nintendo products. My brain is ready for your washing. <laughs> God, they like they print the letters of the I want to gobble your shaft and funnel the ball. I, it, I and I'll get right on that as soon as you sell me some Nintendo knee pads. Oh, I'd not buy those. I think they did have Nintendo knee pads with the rollerblading gear. Well, there you go. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> I gave him the Mike's mom last uh. year. <laughs> So You're I can so thoughtful. Rest assured... Yeah. <laughs> so I can rest assured that all the games you talk about are for the Super NES, Game Boy, or Virtual Boy. Finally, I know I can always rely on your highly superb reviews of the games I think look interesting. Uh. Thanks for the years of good gaming info by Andy Parrish via American Online. And, uh, well, John, you wanted brevity. Alright. Conan the Barbarian from the internet writes in, Is it possible... <laughs> If I can get all the moves and secrets for Killer Instinct 2. And they say, we're still trying to figure them out ourselves, but uh, in the meantime, there will be special, uh, there's a special articles in volumes 81 and 83. Also, we have international flavor. Adios, Nestor Awards from Dennis Bachman of Vienna Sausages. Writes in, I have just received your March issue, and I was appalled when I opened the Nintendo Power Word Awards. Now I realize you canceled the Howard and Esther cartoon long ago. Wow. <laughs> Where's this guy been? And therefore, calling the awards Nestor wouldn't make any sense to your new readers, but this is a long-standing tradition in your magazine. Your last one, I might add. That doesn't even make sense. And I dis- <laughs> it's disappointed me to see it disappear. So You're Dennis is a is a stickler for tradition. All right. I've All right. All right. <sighs> We're still going with these letters. How many do they print? <laughs> I swear. All right. Michael Wyant via American Online says in volume eighty three of Nintendo Power, Joel Strope wrote how much he appreciated that Nintendo Power is a clean magazine. But oh, never print anything like crap. He wouldn't appreciate this <laughs> co- podcast then. <laughs> yes, indeed. Surely a fan. Another pop- popular video game magazine, which shall remain nameless, contained such appetizing ads as a close-up shot of a crushed bumblebee between some- someone's teeth and a couple of kids' butts hanging out of shorts in an ad for a baseball game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, this magazine here would never print, ever print, a bunch of toenails in a jar for issue <laughs> after fucking issue. What, 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 I sh- what, up, uh, what magazine is that kids' butt ad in? So I can, <laughs> so I can avoid it. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you off air. Don't worry. Yeah, I've, got it. I've got it bookmarked. Anyway, I too would like to say thank you for keeping your magazine neat and free of advertisements. Mm. Except for your own stuff. (laughs) And we've got the corner complaint. I'm complaining about Volume 82 Counselor's Corner. I've never seen as many lame questions in my life. The DKC2 and Yoshi's Island questions were horribly lame. Why did you print these? Well, why did they print your letter? By Ryan Schillinger via America Online. I, I like the title there. They, they call it Corner Complaint and they put it in the corner of the page. And Ryan, again, Cute. spelled terribly. It's like Rin, 
with a Y. Hey, at the same way as you spell Ryan Sandberg, motherfucker. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You don't freaking... <laughs> Uh, Disrespect I'll the give line. You, uh, wait, 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 wait. Bef- without going to the internet, I'll give you five bucks if you tell me what sport Ryan Sandberg played. <laughs> I'm guessing football. Baseball. Oh. <laughs> so, Ryan, these are the most commonly asked questions received by our gameplay counselors. By answering them, we figure we're saving game players a lot of calls to our GPCs. Just another benefit you get with your subscription to Nintendo Power. Ah, uh, once upon a time, Dan Dahl, via the internet, that's not a made-up name. <laughs> Is it true that Nintendo began producing playing cards in the 1880s? Seems hard to believe such a small business could have escalated into the number one home entertainment platform. Uh, he doesn't know how business works. <laughs> All right, you're right, Dan. While waiting for the microchip to be invented, the Yamuchi family plunged headlong into a mountain of cocaine and decided... <laughs> to make playing cards. <laughs> They've been providing yeah. top-notch crystal meth to the entirety of Japan ever since. Did you know that N- N- Nintendo back in the 70s actually uh, had love hotels? Oh, yeah. That's just what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, you snaked me. Uncle Lippy's Hump Palace. <laughs> oh, well. Uh Right. And the best, which Nintendo, some of the most which Nintendo free- mascot would be, be like obviously other than like Peach would be best to have sex with like maybe Kirby. I mean, but he would like. Oh yeah, that, that, I mean, hmm. it yeah, it, it it might be the best you ever have, or you could lose your dick. Yeah, he might like suck so hard your butthole like inverts out your dick, <laughs> <laughs> and you go through like a space time continuum. <laughs> He just sucks your asshole out through your shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just see, like, the plaid tunnel, like, yeah. in 2001, the Space Odyssey, because... Now <laughs> you're your sucking with you. power. <laughs> As your cock gets spaghetti fried. <laughs> the best way. <laughs> this is how I always knew where it would go. <laughs> oh, my God, it's full of cum. <laughs> <laughs> And just like 2001, uh, there's a baby at the end. <laughs> oh, jeez. Andy, Andy's floating through space. Probably because probably he was sent there by Captain Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, we, fi- we finally solved the ending of that movie. Mm-hmm. The Enterprise had to make a drop-off. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, tell us about the centennials. All right. Cent- we'll we Mike. <laughs> we lost Mike. <laughs> That's right. Centennial <laughs> celebration. What will be in your 100th issue? I love your magazine. It's great. Yeah, we know what's going to be 15 months ahead in time. <laughs> That's right. Joe Smith. <laughs> it'll be us. Right now, seating, our- it'll be us seating everything to Sony because PlayStation will have taken over. All right. Yeah, right. Right now, it'll be us apologizing for creating Sony. Yeah, right. For creating PlayStation in the first place. Sorry, I'm so well, right, Yeah. That's okay. Right now, our plans include secret email addresses of every fighter in KI2, Yoshi's favorite souffle recipes, <laughs> an exclusive interview with the last person in America playing the Sega 32X. Oh, oh burn. Burn. <laughs> oh. That is if Geraldo doesn't beat us to him. Of course, we're always open to suggestions. Wow. Uh, Geraldo Yoshi is a, Yeah, Yoshi is a, an interesting character, especially in Yoshi's 2, like when we see them like eat enemies and just like immediately shit on an egg. Like you, like you just got to wonder like what kind of digestive system does Yoshi have where you just instantly metabolize an enemy and you just like like Yoshi's come from the same eggs they make. So Yoshis are just like cobbled together homunculi made from the guts <coughs> and internal organs of the most recent thing they ate. Hmm. That seems scientific. All right. I'm going to take the last letter. Uh, let's see. It's Foul Ball from Death Chicken on the x band Video Game Network. So that was the <coughs> cartridge with the modem built into it. So he's paying a lot of money to send this. I was deeply offended by your creative use of poultry headline. In the classified information of volume A2. Chickens will one day rule the world, and you should apologize before it's too late. 
Cluck all you want, Death Chicken. We're not afraid of your foul plan. <laughs> it's the ducks that we fear. Quack, 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 Mr. Ducksworth. <laughs> well, yeah, well, chickens aren't the rapists of the sky. Mm. Yeah, that's true. What I mean, so, like, dolphins are the rapists of the sea. Cosby's are the rapists of the land. <laughs> yep, the only one. The only rapist, yes. Yeah, that's right. And well, you see, the when you got the jello and the quaalude, and <laughs> put the quaalude in the pudding pop and the zip in the zap, and then, and then yeah, and, 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 and then you put the hand in the shirt, and she doesn't say anything because she's <laughs> off in la la land catching disease. <laughs> oh God, that motherfucker! Mm. Oh man! All right, uh, you want to cover the players' poll winner, Mike? Take us home. Sure, it's combat crazy. Add, add, add another K, and it's right from his home in Alabama. <laughs> oh, man. Bo Ackerman of Montgomery, Alabama, jetted to Houston, probably the furthest he's ever been, <laughs> to collect the perfect price for a Mortal Kombat freak. VIP seats at the MK3 live show. There was a Mortal Kombat live show? Yeah, they oh actually my killed God, that must have been so... They had the actors fight to the death. It was amazing. Well, that's the only way it could have been good. Yeah. Yeah, he loved it. He's giving the camera a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. In the Astro Arena, afterwards, Bo hobnobbed with the cast of real-life martial arts experts. Fortunately, they didn't demonstrate any of their closing moves on him. (laughs) That would have been hilarious. Yeah, I I don't think... I think they did. I I Take a look at his face there. He definitely looks like he's seen some of uh, (laughs) Tonya Styes. Capping Bo's once-in-a-lifetime once experience were primo seats at a, rock, at a Rockets game and a jaunt through the Johnson Space Center where he and his mom Nancy took the controls of a space shuttle simulator. Nice. And she crashed it because women drivers. Well, they were in, te- <laughs> they were in Texas, so it broke Jeez. up like Columbia. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Nancy took the controls of a space shuttle simulator. Bo's whirlwind tour left him breathless except for three words. Out of this world. All right. And uh, it looks like he's taking a picture with his mom in the simulator, which is cute. And in the second one, it looks like he's, like, filming a, a, a shitty 80s video behind him. <laughs> or, hell, just there. And we get to see, is that, sco- is that supposed to be Scorpion? Yep. That looks what? fucking terrible. And the guy that looks like Kano looks... Like he's got like a like a stripped down power glove and a bit of silver makeup on his face, mm-hmm. and and who the hell is that girl? That's supposed to be Sonia. Yep, probably. Who the hell is this totally white guy s- sitting next to them? Uh, that would be the winner. <laughs> no, that's the white guy standing. I'm talking about <laughs> the white guy sitting behind, beside him. It's some sort uh, of. That's a lady. Oh, yeah, is that yeah, Katana? Yeah. What? yeah. That's supposed to be Katana. Oh, my God. Oh, this is all so terrible. He's totally hover-handing the backs of the girls, too. He doesn't have the, his hands on their shoulders like he should. No, because he's trying to undo their bras. <laughs> this kid's all player. <laughs> yeah, not, not a very smart one, though. All it's right. a sports bra there. Power charts. Okay, top five for the Super NES. We got Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, 53 months on the chart and still holding. That is a sign of a great game. Mm. Killer Instinct, Super Mario RPG, and Donkey Kong 2, Diddy's Kong Quest. John, what's the most wanted? Um, Nintendo 64, Cruising USA, Killer Instinct, Shadows of the Empire, and Doom, all for the 64. And on somehow the X Band modem is still on there, <laughs> <laughs> and the Virtual Boy somehow over Dragon Quest. Mm. Oh, that's terrible! They're not as popular suck. as the X Band modem. <laughs> uh, All right, so uh, Ivan Game Boy is. So Game Boy, we got Tetris, Metroid Two: Return of Samus, Donkey Kong Land, Super Mario <laughs> Land Two: Six Golden Coins, and topping it out. Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening. And then for the tournament fighters, they have the great option of giving us a dark brown background with a black <laughs> font. Let's read the first three. Yeah. Read Killer th- Instinct Nintendo, Mortal Kombat 3, Williams... Oh, so it's not... Okay. Mortal Kombat 2, Acclaim, WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game, and Mortal Kombat Acclaim. Hmm. Hey, that's pretty good. I'm impressed. I... I... 
Couldn't read the last one. You can kind of make it out. But yeah. Yeah, barely. All right. So we get into the... Is this the first preview? I don't know. I've been uh, I haven't been reading my epi- my issues lately, but uh, hey, hey, cut, hey, don't skip past the Mo- Virtual Boy Ten. Come on, I gotta know no. what's hot. <laughs> Mario Land, Mario Tennis, Galactic Pinball, Mario Clash, and Golf. <laughs> and yeah, that's yeah, half yeah, of the yeah. games for the system. Kill Very it. good. Just kill it. Take it out behind the pack. <laughs> I, I, or give it to Bowser and let him fuck it because that's this right. guy is this guy's ready to pow- this guy's ready to pound. Mm. Yeah, he he's still coked out of his ass. He's ready to go. <laughs> Look at you can see the you can see the veins in his eyes for fuck's sake. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm surprised he's I'm surprised he doesn't have like a little runny nose action going on. Ooh. Man, All that right. guy's nothing but nose. <laughs> Thing is half his face. <laughs> <laughs> so, is this the first pre? I mean, I know they've been hyping the 64, but is this like they're they're unveiling to the world what's coming for the 64? I, it can't be. It, they say it, but we've seen them give screenshots of uh, okay. of, of different things. But they just decided, nope. Now we're going to get super. Well, it says right here, the Fun Machine, an exclusive world tour of the first N64 games. And then we've got Mike Rubinelli from Third Party Development, Williams Entertainment. Says ultimately, it's the software that makes the system great, and that's where Nintendo has always excelled. He's actually no he's not wrong. So, all right, uh, let's see. And then Ken Lobb says, The power of this machine, though far beyond the competition, is irrelevant. The true power of the N64 lies in the games. Well, then that's why the PlayStation beat it. As always, it's Nintendo's games which define fun. This is more true than ever with the N64. Is it really? All right. And, uh, so let's see, they have some coverage here of who, the, who they have lined up to be producers for some of the games, so they're going to do first-party Nintendo games, obviously. Williams, LucasArts, Rare, Paradigm, and Angel Studios are the uh, producers or studios that they're um, they have wrangled into making games for the 64 at this point. So is this Wait, the... Angels, is this the first... Studios looks like they're ripping off the, uh, the Nirvana, the Nevermind album. What was your question, Ivan? <laughs> Yeah, it does look like that, doesn't it? Uh, I was wondering if this is the first issue that they are officially calling it the N64. Yeah, because it was the Ultra 64, like, back when I was reading. <laughs> Mike? Yeah. Mike doesn't and, know. Uh, that, that. That's Mike's, like... <laughs> that's Mike's, like... Uh, that's right. I'm not sure. Let's just say yeah. 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 We're asking the, the yeah. one guy who's been on every episode of this podcast... <laughs> Jesus Christ, Mike. All right. I wasn't talking to John, Mike. <laughs> yeah, they called. He it, just blew he? you off. He t- oh my God! All right. <laughs> That's all right. All right. <laughs> it's like there's so many other things to focus on in this magazine. Like when they went, when they switched from Ultra to just Nintendo 64, it uh, kind of it, it's it it's, it passed me over. Mm. So we got Minoru Arakawa saying it's totally different from existing 16 and 32-bit video game systems. You can see the difference from the first moment you plug in the Super Mario 64. That's pretty accurate. I mean, that when you plug in Super Mario 64, it really is sort of a transition to the next generation of games. I don't know what, what is this pilot wings that they have shots of here. What is this? Yeah, I think line? so. They're gonna be talking about it later but on in this issue. That's not what pilot wings ever looked like. It's had to be something else. Huh. Yeah, too bad they don't have the names of the games. That would really help. <laughs> oh, it is. Because it's Pilot looks like... 64, but that's an early build of that game. It did not end up looking like this. And then we've got Shadows of the Empire featuring a very lopsided ship. Which really looks like it looks like half of a ship. That's the ship from Shadows of the Empire, don't you remember? Yeah, that's like, uh, what's, uh, Prince Izor's ship, right. isn't it? It's like a, it's kind of like the B-Wing, where it's like, the cockpit is offset really heavily. The Millennium Falcon has that, too, it's just an exaggerated version of it. Yeah, but the Millennium Falcon is symmetrical, this is not. The Millennium Falcon is definitely not symmetrical. The cockpit <laughs> is off to one side. <laughs> By definition, it's not symmetrical. But this is more asymmetrical. I'll give you that. 
And Super Mario 64, your world will never be the same. The new gold standard in video games has arrived. And, uh, yeah, we get to see Bowser looking all chunky and choppy. Stellar story. I don't know if I would necessarily call Mario 64, like, story is super compelling. It's like, Bowser right. takes Peach, do your thing like you've done every time every other Mario game. <laughs> oh, Pulitzers will be coming. <laughs> this is the first time you can actually make physical contact with Bowser by actually grabbing him and swinging him around. <laughs> At every, least it starts with, game. like, the letter... You know, and you go to you yeah. go to the castle, and Bowser like has kidnapped her, and blah blah blah. But so yeah, where Peach sends him a letter saying, "Mario, I'm finally ready to put out. Come on, yeah, over. come over and eat my cake." And he's like, "Yeah, bitch!" And you know, he gets there, and <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna supply the frosting. Woo! I'm gonna cream yeah, pie that. I, donut. <laughs> I, I think Mario's working on that because it, it really looks like he's grabbing Bowser by the dick. <laughs> Getting ready to swing him around in that one picture. <laughs> Worst glory hole ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that's what makes that, that. That's what makes docking fun. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Shigeru Miyamoto has to say about. It says it's the best game of the Mario series. It offers many options for the individual player. Oof. That's. It's my favorite, probably. I don't know. Really? I go with Mario World. Uh, yeah, Mario World. Probably. I did say Super Mario World is like my favorite game of all time, so it's kind of hard to. <laughs> I will say, yeah. that, like Odyssey. This is the first game where you get to realize a 3D world can be very. F- 3D worlds make terrible platformers. <laughs> Because you keep thinking, I can make this block. Why am I going past this block? Why am I falling? I don't know. And then you realize, like, oh, shit, the block is, like, slightly off to the left. Or you've just completely overshot it. Or you undershot it because you have no idea how far you're traversing the distance in between. Odyssey has been amazingly good, though, I will say. Like, I've gotten so much enjoyment out of that game. (laughs) Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, like, the... The thousand moons or whatever, it's impo- like I'm. I think I'm just over five hundred, and I was just like, Ugh, I just can't anymore. <laughs> like, but you don't need anywhere near that to beat the game, obviously. So, yeah, it's kind of like like the power stars in Mario sixty four. It's like there's a what one hundred twenty. Yeah, I got one hundred twenty without without killing myself. Like, there's literally a thousand of them in Odyssey. Like, it's tedious to. Them. And some of them, like, I'll be honest, without a guide, it, you're never going to figure it out. It's just not going to happen. But Oh, it's just like the uh, the stars in uh, Mario uh, in Mario Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, you only need, like, 80, and there's, like, 150 of them, and it turns out uh, your big reward. You get to play the whole game over again as Luigi. <laughs> yeah, well, they've I think been doing the it thousand, it, You get, like, an invisible Mario suit. <laughs> so... Well, it's better so than... in other words, in other words, we turn off the sprite layer. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah. It's be- better than sunshine. I don't think you get anything for completing all for getting all the shine sprites in Mario Sunshine. I wanted to like that <laughs> game more than it than I did. I don't know. It came out when I was in college. I just didn't have time for it. So it was a good concept. Yeah. It came out just didn't after I graduated college, so I had lots of time for it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Ivan, tell us about Blast Core. All right, when you don't want to nuke it, knock it down with the most destructive dozers in the world. Did you play this game on the 64? No, no, I I didn't play too much on the 64. My roommate in college had it. Played a bunch of GoldenEye, a few other random games, but this this wasn't one of them. Did you ever play this one, Mike? No, I only got to play... uh, Two games for the Super Nintendo until my dad sold it because I got a PlayStation and he thought that I wouldn't need more than one console at a time. <laughs> this game was interesting because, like, pretty much everything in the world is destructible. Kind of like an early... Okay. What was that Red Fact? Was that Red Faction that had that? Yeah. Like, it, it was kind of a, I like that an game. earlier concept of that. Like, more... Th- not, that the, not that the ground is destructible, just, like, anything object-wise can be destroyed, pretty much. Yeah, kind of like a Lego game. Mm-hmm. So it was. Uh, I think what I remember about it was like playing kind of like the player, like you know, the multiplayer, just trying to you know blow each other up was the most fun. It wasn't really that compelling as a single player game. You can only make blow everything up so fun so many times. <laughs> <It's> like, 
It looks like we're looking at like a, an extremely discount version of Bumblebee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much what they what you got. It wasn't the greatest game, but like as with any system when it's new, like <laughs> there's only three or four games out there, so you're gonna try pretty much everything you can get your hands on. So right. Yeah. And uh kinda like many PlayStation games, this looks like a Dorito nightmare when it comes to uh rendering any models. Yeah, the Nintendo 64 did not have a lot of, you know, especially the early games, graphically were rough, so... Well, I will say, the picture that they've got there of the train running down a car right. as it's going by a, a silo or something, that looks pretty good. It's all right. It does. But once it's in motion, it's pretty rough. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like that, that, it wasn't a bad game, just like... There was only a, I mean, it was it was one of those games you rented, and that was enough. <laughs> yeah, as Chris Stamper of Rare said, if you make a game in which you can knock things down, it'll be fun. <laughs> Not wrong. Truer words were never spoken. You think his nickname was Stampy? <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. We got some shows. Chris Waffle Stamper. Yeah. <laughs> well, he 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 got the nickname Stamper because of the way he kept rapping women with his dick in college. So. All right, Shadows of the Empire. Did the, was that the was that the name that was, was published on? Because I remember it was like Rogue Squadron, yeah. right? Or is that a different game? No, Rogue Squadron was like a different flying game. Uh, with the, uh, I never played that one either. I did. Oh, I uh, I played two games, Shadows of the Empire, and Mario sixty four. <laughs> I wanted to play Zelda, but I only had to like. I had to rent time at the video game store so I could play the model that they had. Oh. Because I didn't have my N64 anymore. <laughs> but, Canada uh, is such a sad you know. place. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, a new hope has dawned, but the final victory is yet to be won. Herein lies a tale of those who fight in the shadows of the Empire. And here we've got like a... a is that the Zizor ship from an overhead view? Yep. I, I can't tell. Oh, it's man. entirely in shade. Yeah, this looks like a again like a like a completely lopsided Millennium Falcon from above. But uh, yeah, you play Dash Rendar, I believe, and uh, you get to play basically Star Wars while the while the rest of Star Wars is going on. This is what's happening uh, around it. Off to the side. They call yeah, they, like Dash Rendar. Do they call him Render because hmm? the game doesn't render fully? <laughs> That's right. It's an ironic name. <laughs> I love. I love how Mary Biller of LucasArts says we've utilized the raw power of the N64 <laughs> to the fullest. Right. In Shadows of the Empire, yeah, like like oh, any come on. like any release game is pushing the system as far as it can go. Yep. Yeah. Cool. This is this is as good as it gets. Take a look at this. Take a look at my polygons in despair. Oh, you got to. You want to talk about polygon rendering? PUBG on the fucking Xbox. Dear God, like getting anything to render on that. Ugh. <clears throat> it's so much fun though. All right, uh, Doom sixty <laughs> four. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yet another port of Doom. Just what you all wanted. But, uh, <laughs> I think that's the quote too. <laughs> and, uh, we, we, we've got three screenshots that look exactly the same. It's a doom you can't ignore. It's we doom. won't let you. <laughs> quote: We can't stop milking this cow. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Blah blah blah. Just grabbing the shaft up and down can't stop. <laughs> you suckers keep and paying they... us. We keep porting this game. <laughs> So we've got on the first page we've got four screenshots, three of which are identical. <laughs> and on the other page we have a guy holding a gun at uh, what appears to be chewing gum. <laughs> High definition yeah. rendered enemies won't pixelate even at close range. You can almost see their tonsils. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Does this oh, guy do any? Oh, sorry. No, I have. Go ahead. What's going on? <laughs> no, go ahead. I just wondering. I, I again, I didn't play this game. Did it, does this guy do anything but point a handgun? I mean, yeah, you've never played Doom. Grab, not, I haven't played this one now. Well, I all just Dooms point. are the same. So, <laughs> but yes. okay, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's but that's... but he doesn't get any kind of other weapon. I mean, yeah, you can pick up other stuff. Just whatever they've 
programmed at that point is just the pistol, it looks like. But yeah, the, according to the pictures, it's <laughs> just a pistol, pistol, yeah, pistol. Yeah, but no, you pick up you know rocket launchers and all, you know all the different stuff. But no, they should show me that then. Well, I don't think that it's ready for that. Is the point? <laughs> You're not ready for this, okay? There's a, like, we'll just give you the realism of this pistol, and you'll just have to wait to see how great the Tommy guns and the chainsaw look. All right. All right well, they've got me sold. I'll, I'll be waiting. And we have Body <laughs> Harvest coming, which is a great porn title. Uh, you're Adam Drake, a one-man SWAT team. They're, by definition, you're not a SWAT team, then tripping through time to drive an <laughs> alien dinner party. <laughs> the food fights back, so the aliens are here to eat all humans, and you're there to stop them. I don't remember this game at all, but it looks like... A praying mantis with a chainsaw on the end of his arms? Yeah. Wow, that, like, how does that guy feed himself? <laughs> Very carefully. <laughs> and then we've got uh, Waspinator from Beast Wars on the other page. I do enjoy the, the quote is from Centipede Invader. Pass the salt, pass the human hay. Where did he go? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we get to see a, an entire list of all the different, uh, yeah, they've, I guess, you, vehicles. You go everything from like a helicopter to a steamboat. So, yeah. Mm. That looks pretty darn good. You got submarines, dune buggies, what appears to be like a, a, a poorly drawn Romulan warbird. Ocean liner, tank. Yeah, pretty good variety there. All right. Uh, let's see. We also have the first preview of GoldenEye 007. Mm, uh, that's my Pierce, game. Pierce Brosnan's sexy-ass render right there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad. semi-recognizable. You know it's Pierce Brosnan. It's got that going for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Martin so. Hollis of Rare. We've made a, a half dozen trips to the studio and actual and use actual blueprints of the sets. So we have that Woo! going for us. <sighs> but, I mean, who doesn't know James Bond 007? Goldeneye. Yeah, and we got a uh, Soviet missile. Mm -hmm. CCCP. This missile bay looks fucking great, I gotta say. Don't you remember that it, stage it in the game? Like, seriously? I, well, I told you I only got to play two games on Oh my N64. god, this is gonna be a fun couple months. Of... <laughs> I've never played any of these games. Yes, that's yeah. how the game You doing works. anything next week, John? Sounds like Mike could use you. Yeah, apparently. Apparently I need to make a triumphant return because I've actually played a 64 game at some point in time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, next we got Cruising USA. Did you ever play this Nintendo game? Nintendo and... <laughs> I think I played an arcade version of it. Mm -hmm. you know, the, or I'm confusing it with uh, Hydro Thunder. They're basically, or, they're, uh, cruising. they're basically the same game. So. <laughs> or uh, yeah. I think it was like San Francisco Cruising 2049 or something. I don't. Like that. I don't think they had the bikini babes in the in the version that made the home version. I <laughs> think maybe maybe there you, were. I forget. If you liked it in the arcade, you'll love it on the N sixty four. It just plain rocks. Mm -hmm. That's Michael Kelbog of Product Testing Manager Nintendo. It's an odd township. <laughs> <laughs> well, they they declared their own country, so they don't have to. They don't have to, they don't have to like adhere to any um, labor laws. So. <laughs> they just you know throw a goat in there like uh, the pen and the velociraptors and yeah, fourteen year olds can solder a cartridge and like so can eight year olds in our in our world like we we don't want our children to starve so we let them have jobs I don't know about how you do it in the rest of the world but <laughs> yeah and don't worry about taking care of their sexual needs because we got that fine ass lady yeah <laughs> page twenty nine there. Yeah, looking like she's not wearing a damn thing with a That's what I was racing saying. I don't flag think over her shoulder. The bikini babies made the bikini babes, not babies. The bikini babes made the uh, the home version. I think. Yeah, Freudian to... slip there, John. Yeah, mm, sexy baby. Yeah, yeah. The bikini, no, the babes made it. The bikini didn't. Yeah, it looks like she's rocking, the, it looks like she's rocking a full patch. <laughs> oh, you gave her the old Saskatoon strip, did you? <laughs> Did you see uh, Super Troopers Two yet? No. Apparently it's an it's out? apparently it's a, an affront to everything Canadian. Mm, gotta check it out. Rob Lowe's character, they like 
he's the mayor of the town, the Canadian town that's about to be transferred to America, and they <laughs> recognize him, and he's like, they're like, oh, you're the hockey player, whatever your name is, and you're like, yeah, they used to call me the Halifax Explosion. And I was like, oh, oh my god. Oh, <laughs> that's a fucking, oh shit, that's, oh my god. You would not get away with making a movie like, hey, did you see the way that guy tackled? That's why they called him the 9-11 of Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Hall- in the twenties, Halifax is blown up by like a there's like a, a ship cargo that exploded and killed thousands. A mu- of yeah, people. munitions. A munition ship exploded and it killed thousands of people in Halifax. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, it wasn't the best joke oh to make. I was sitting there in the theater. I was like, oh, oh my god. Uh, anyway, you weren't. You didn't think that you'd get that line in the movie, did you, John? The Toronto, the Toronto uh, newspaper gave it zero out of five stars and called it an affront to humanity, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So glad I didn't kickstart that. <laughs> Good to know Rob Lowe's doing quality work these days. Uh, all right, Pilot Wing 64. This game never looked like this, so I don't know what the hell build this was. We've got Uncle Sam flying a shark, Pinocchio with a jetpack. Uh, it looks like and a jester. Is that a jester's hat on? What the hell yeah, is that? I don't. The game that eventually came out was literally nothing like this, so I have no <laughs> idea what this is. They got Nestor on a hang glider. Yeah. Wow! Wow! It looks like the lady in the next page her her tits are yeah uh, working the controls there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she's got like mounty pants on. <laughs> Giving yeah. you a little salute. I don't know. I have no idea what this is because the <laughs> what, they, what they shipped. This is nothing like it's a. Oh, it's like a. Hold on. Are, are you fuckers ignoring the gorilla on Mount Rushmore? How can you fucking see that? Wow. Yeah. Maybe. Your eyesight never fails to amaze this me. Some, this is some Planet of the Apes shit going on here. Yeah. All right, and then they got an early build of Wave Race '64. Um, and what's coming to us from Rare? We got Killer Instinct, um, and they have some of the testers and programmers for the different games. I get that they had to fuck around with the engine to make like three D models and shit, but uh, like given the extra processing power, like Super Mario, um, RB, uh, not RPG, Paper Mario, it looked great on the sixty four, like. Uh, if they yeah, but that's more, just, more that's, 2D that's, that's games. That's cell shaded. Like that's the whole point. <laughs> I know you could. Everyone, like okay, everyone was losing stuff. their mind because they're like, oh, like we can render 3D environments, so let's push for it. You know, you would. Yeah, I guess like you some would, people. You would You button. wouldn't have the games that you have today without this stage. So like, I don't know. It would have been nice to see other 2D games. Like it's like I understand some people got to take the risk. But, you know, you, you can also play it safe sometimes. Yeah, but, I mean, look at the games that, I mean, when you use 2D correctly. I mean, look at, like, Wind Waker and Beautiful Joe and, you know, some of those games yeah. that absolutely were just masterpieces. So, I mean, yeah, it's a way you can go back and, like, let the let the system, you know, not have to focus so much on rendering yeah. top graphics. So Did you, did you play Odin Sphere for the uh, PlayStation 2? I played Okami. Is that similar? No, because o- Odin Sphere is like a, a 2D platformer, but it is like the most beautiful 2D hmm. sprite work that uh, that uh, was possible. And they've remade Odin Sphere, so I imagine it looks even better now. <laughs> so after they went to Rare, they were just talking about Blast Cores and Goldeneye and all the different rendering work they're doing. Uh, the most important... Thing to balance his play so that both pros and novices can get something out of it. Well, that's a helpful quote. Yeah, and we've got uh, Rare with uh, with uh, both these people seem to have misplaced nipples. <laughs> we, we've got Orchid with wow. uh, apparently like upturned nips and like massive nips too. Like she's either yeah, got a tumor going on. I was gonna say that's exactly yeah. what I was thinking. Though that's not a nipple, man. Mastectomy time. <laughs> and then we got Jago, who's apparently got nipples under his uh, chin. 
<laughs> yeah. And then yeah, like Schum- even Schumacher would be like, "You, you need to. You, I can. I can help you with that." Mark yeah, Batteridge. We need to make it a little quoted, more realistic. Who Mark Batteridge, who worked on the Killer Instinct, apparently uh, is quoted saying, "Subtle, <coughs> subtle camera instincts, or, or sorry, stu- subtle camera shifts emphasize the drama of a move." So that explains a lot of why the camera is so shit in Goldeneye. <laughs> he's 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 saying that while looking like a twenty year old Keith Richards. Yeah, kind of with a bit of Rob Lowe thrown in. Yeah. <laughs> then we got Duncan Botfly, who uh, also worked on Goldeneye, and then Graham Smith, who couldn't even yeah they can't a, be as, bothered to turn. And Mark Wahlberg, they, <laughs> That's they, all right. They can't even be bothered to be told like we're taking your picture now. Yeah, I don't know. What I'm seeing of Martin Wakeley down there, I'm kind of glad that I'm only seeing that portion of him. I think I'd regret it if he turned around. Yeah. <laughs> Duncan Bet- Botwood looks like the kind of guy that would um, walk into the house on to catch a predator. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you uh, sit down and have some lemonade, Mr. Botwood? <laughs> All right. Um, and, uh, and, yeah. But, oh, remember... Oh. Was it was it only once or was it more than once where they actually said like, oh by the way we uh, we just had somebody search your trunk. What's up with the rope? <laughs> I have rope in my car. Yeah, but this was like rope. I, I think it was also lie. Oh wow! And uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you've also got chloroform, like, but we won't go into that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just tell them I need help finding my puppy, and they just get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> You can't really blame me, can you? I mean, <laughs> it's not my fault they're so stupid. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Williams and, uh, is also <sighs> working on some games. Uh, they're they're doing the cruising games and Doom. Yay! Yeah, cruising. They, 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 got, they got a, a beautifully modeled uh, Gorgon bull demon thing. The thing from Doom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's one and black uh, guy on the team. And they put him right up front for the diversity shot. And they completely don't light up the room, so he disappears. <laughs> he has that really weird <laughs> Bugs Bunny tie on. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> oh my god, he does have a Bugs Bunny tie. I love this man. You show up for picture day with your Bugs Bunny tie. That That is a man who's just like, I am zany, and I don't care if you know it. <laughs> All right, and then let's oh. see. They have some more coverage here. What else is coming? Looks like a, there's that's a Wayne Gretzky 3D hockey. Yeah, I remember running that at some point. It was a very arcadey hockey game. We got an early, early shot of Super Mario Kart. Yeah. Then we got Wayne Gretzky's 3D hockey. Which I and, just uh, said. Again, por- <laughs> and with a, well, I'm talking about the title shot. With uh, what probably is a good looking, a, uh, a well rendered Gretzky photo, but you can't tell in this poorly lit shot. And, and speaking of poorly lit inserts, we've got something on the bottom which looks like a a very basic Ninja Turtle facing off against James Bond. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's the Mission Impossible games. It is. Mission Impossible, which is based on the big screen thriller, thriller, thriller starring Tom Cruise. Blah, 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 blah. So that's and one Raphael. Of the early, that's one of the early builds of Mission Impossible. Uh, they also Where, have a real, before the, real before derpy. Before they got sued by, they, before they got sued by Mirage they got, Studios. They got a real derpy Turok build going. Apparently. Oh my God, this is like this is like one render away from Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and what else? Dogbert. I, I like the the one to the left. It looks like Dogbert <laughs> fucked Kirby. What is that? From? That's from. I remember that in a game. Bucky Boogie. Mm, I don't know. Another entry, Freak Boy, is coming from Virgin Games. All right, uh, Freak Boy. That's wasn't that one. Wasn't that one of Rihanna's first hits? Freak a leak. All right. And thank God. What the hell are these inserts at the bottom with these two like metal robot faces screaming at each other? I don't know. All right. I should not live. I should not live either. <laughs> Let's get through. What do you What do you want to get through? We can get through the classified information and the summer games and call it a half. Sure. Sounds good. Okay. Classified information. Uh, anything stand out here? 
Uh, I see sports stuff. It just, yeah. <laughs> Mike's brain just shuts down. All right. <laughs> There's a team mascot uh, that you can unlock in International Superstar Stalker. There's a stage select code for Judge Dredd on the Game Boy. Oh, that's the Konami code. Uh, a left. That's the full Konami code. No, for the uh, for the soccer. Oh, that is yeah. Your new and mascot branded. will also hold yellow cards for the refs. That's funny. All right, Brandish. There's a free warp spill. Uh, Killer Instinct selected. <laughs> and 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 it's only got eight easy steps. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you can do. You can select your opponent in the practice mode of Killer Instinct. Let's see, rookies. Turns out there are a lot more secret players in NBA Live '96. This time around, we've got some great rookies. To add any of these people to any team, select the edit players so you can add. Wow, like all the rookies. Why don't they just put them on the freaking teams? Wow, they've literally got a player named Fucking. Yeah, F, F King. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Fucking joking. And then we've got Roe, but I don't see Wade. We've got uh, uh, Studemeyer. I mean, they have Zidane yeah, Stogaskis. Yeah, there. you have Fred Hoidberg. You've sold me there, so. <laughs> Ice. We got and some actual Ice. names. And everyone's. Air Dick. Air Dick. Air Dick. Yeah. God damn it. Uh, Daddy O. Oh, man. Like, who, uh, finally we get to be Daddy O. Daniel Ning. McKibben, which yeah sounds like a sex move as well as Tarlac. I don't know. You got uh, thirsty. <laughs> we got thirsty. I think Damon Stoudemire. <laughs> it's definitely not Amari. Uh, mm. Jerry Stackhouse, Andy Reid. He probably stands on the side with like a uh, Denny's menu. <laughs> Pele is in there, so he can do some bicycle. <laughs> oh well, yeah, as he should be in every NBA. Rammer. Uh, how did we how did we ignore Rammer for this long? <laughs> I guess and, Steve O'Bannon there. Yeah, everyone's favorite Traz. All right, Panic Bomber. The Ivana. The, oh my gosh. Panic Bomber, the 9/11 simulator. Uh, <laughs> well, the guys, the guys that ended up in the field in, in Pennsylvania. I mean, they just they they screwed up. All right. Yeah, this is the game they trained on. <laughs> All right, uh, boss only game. Blah 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 blah. There's a special team mode, and I can't even read what game it is. Oh my god, the invincibility code for Rise of the Robots. Look at this robot clatter ass. sack, clusterfuck. I mean, what, what does that say? Quarterback Mike, you're the club. one with the quarterback club. That's what it is. <laughs> oh. What are you? What are you getting at? I was looking at the, Top, the robot ass. Yeah, of course, in Rise at, of the Robots, I'm looking at robot ass. But all right, uh, look at the logo <laughs> that is on quite the top an ass. Left. On for the special teams, what is the game? What logo? What game is that? Quarterback. It says quarterback. Special teams. Quarterback club. Okay, never mind. You can at least read quarterback somehow. <laughs> all right, tell us about the robot ass, Mike. Well, we're looking at this robot. It looks like he's doing like some Van Dam. Workout shit, or uh, what was that? Uh, uh, Mall rats with Michael Rooker when he's working out naked in the beginning of the movie. That's what this guy's doing when he's kicking a robot. Are you confusing Mall rats with Die Hard Two? Uh, they are basically Michael the same Rooker. Movie. Did, did Michael <laughs> Rooker do a naked workout in that movie too? Die Hard Two. There was a naked workout in the beginning of that movie. Yeah. Well, th apparently there was a lot of inspiration for this scene then, because he's doing like some weird s naked sidekick shit. All right, there's a code for an arrow fighters. There's a also a breath of fire Chun Li high kicking demo code. Blah. There's classic team codes in Madden '96. So great. Where you can get different years, like the '65 Browns, the '80 Oilers. Hence the classic teams, but yeah, let's, yep. Yeah, I get Brett Favre in my team, and I go boom in my shorts. <laughs> oh, I miss Mad. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and coming to the middle of the park and exploding into your living room is the Olympic Summer Games, Atlanta. Uh, uh thank God we don't have to see that fucking mascot. No, that thing will haunt your dreams. Did it? You, you just you wait. Play this? No, no, but uh, 
I, I did have to say I thought of you when I was looking at the coverage on this, uh, page 47. Okay. As uh, the reason I brought you on to the podcast this week. <laughs> because Gotta, there's a guy thrusting over a hurdle. Oh, oh, the girl. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's right, John. The 13-year-old <laughs> gymnast showing yeah, us her fine booty. Wow, that is a wedgie and a half right there. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> you see about half of her ass. So, that thing is just the one thing I was up. most excited for with this game is that Little John's in here because there's a skeet game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, god dang. <laughs> skeet, skeet, god dang. <laughs> um... Uh. Uh, every Olympic game is the same bullshit. Is the problem like they? It's always a mashup of like a dozen crappily made games into one like big pie, and you're stuck. Like I don't know. Yeah. It, it it's always the same shit. <laughs> yeah, we reviewed the Olympic game for the Power Pad episode of Taste Test. Ugh. Coming out soon. Yeah, well, that's probably not too bad. I hope, but this game does yeah. not bring much. It's all it's just, you know, different different versions of button mashing, uh, with, you know, slight variations. And you never felt like you were doing anything all that well. <laughs> and, and let's see the so there's a hundred hundred meter dash, hundred ten meter hurdles, pole vault, triple jump, long jump, high jump, javelin, discus archery, and skeet. Which I'm assuming is actually skeet shooting. <laughs> but you know, it occurred to me, this is finally why there's no swimming. it's called skating. There's no swimming, there's no basketball, there's no gymnastics, there's no... It's basically just track and field, the game. I'm, I'm looking at this insert next to the skeet shooting, and it looks like there's no black people either. There's just shadows in a suit. <laughs> this is... Like, this is terrible. You think they'd realize, like, if you've got, like, black people, like... Can you give, like, a little bit of lighting so we can see some features? So, yeah. Well, you know, you, 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 you need to have the shading so that they uh, they blend in. You don't want them standing <laughs> out. And then, of course, this Olympics is known for the Olympic Park bombing halfway through. where the bo- You mean Izzy? The backpack bomb explodes in the middle of the park and <laughs> kills one person. And there's that, like, nationwide manhunt for Richard Jewell or whatever it was. Hey. Huh. No, actually, Richard Jewell was the security guard that found it. Never mind. Eric Rudolph. Wasn't he the guy that planted it and Slash found it? No, like, that was the rumor, but it ended up being someone else that was bombing the park to protest abortions. So, huh. I hate I hate killing babies so much that I'm going to kill people. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> I wish, his mom had abort- so, I wish his mom had aborted him. So we got Izzy's Quest for the Olympic Rings, and uh, wow, <laughs> boy, this guy looks derpy. Jizzy's Quest? Oh, I got just... the flame! No, no. I got the flame, guys! <laughs> yeah, let me look, look at it, the way, his, the way his jaw just like slacks off to the side. And his eyes are just a little too close together. Well, he is from the South. I mean... <laughs> yeah, th- this guy's the result of inbreeding. Yeah, he's got the hookworm. Hey, Uncle Dad, <laughs> look what I got. I got a torch. Hey, Uncle Dad, Grandpa, <laughs> do the same thing. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Uh, and the, uh, the inserts here say the ring guardians of the Greek village. Oh, boy. Just that just that first sentence alone already has John being titillated. Mm. Have hidden their ring to keep Izzy from taking it out of their world on his quest to reach the Olympic do you think, Games. And then we've got... Do you think, um, you know, the merchandisers, like your Target, even bothered putting this on the shelf or just threw it right in the freaking discount bin? <laughs> Yeah, straight to the five dollar oh, rack. I swear to God, if my grandparents like great gave me this for Christmas, I'd just punch him right in the dick. I'd just be like, <laughs> "What are you doing? You're not even. You know what? Fuck you. I'm not. I'm not going to take into account that you may be trying because at this point you clearly aren't." Ah, <laughs> uh, speaking of not trying, we've reached the end of uh, part one, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Indeed. And it looks like at the end of this Izzy thing, it says, let the flames begin. And the big, the big uh, finale, having achieved his dream, Izzy wishes luck to all the athletes. Oh, God. Yay. This is just complete corporate <sighs> shill. Ugh. Yeah, That's so Nintendo's motto. <laughs> So we've reached the halfway point of this issue, and, uh, well, thanks for uh, joining us, John <laughs> and Ivan. You bet. Yeah, uh, can we find you guys anywhere? Well, you can find me on the taste test with you and occasionally Brandon playing the old NES games. Yep. Hey. And you can also find me on the taste, on the, uh, the revived Technobabble. We're back to talking tech in uh, hilarious ways. And also, I've got the graveyard... Oh, by the way, if you want to get uh, Technobabble, it is on the Geek Fallout Productions Facebook page and the iTunes feed, because there are other shows in that feed as well. But uh, the only show that's being made is Technobabble, which mm. is my tech talk show. And keep an eye out me on the side of milk cartons. <laughs> <laughs> You won't. You won't find John. You'll just find his handiwork. <laughs> no, you won't. And <laughs> he's got the shovel to pepper it. <laughs> they haven't yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, and <laughs> oh, if that's not horrible enough, you can also check out the Graveyard Shift Horror with Sheldon and Mike, where me and Sheldon Brown review horror movies and uh, do hilarious skits. It's a, it's, it's a fun time. It is a good podcast. It I is. For it. Hey. And uh, I think that's about it. So, uh, thank you. John, you paid, more, you, you paid more attention to what Ben did. Am I forgetting something? <laughs> well, if, you're, if you'd like to reach out to us, contact us on the right. Facebook group. <laughs> oh, Mike's retarded brain. All right, uh, Facebook group. Uh, search for Play With Power, and we're on there, and uh, let's see, we're on Twitter. Oh, right. Ben has a uh, another podcast, Repeat One. All one word, if you're going to look for it. Don't space it out like I did. You'll never find it. <laughs> and uh, But the, uh, he talks about music. It's, it's fun. And also see Ready Player One as well. Um, yeah, that game that movie was good. <laughs> yeah, Facebook. Uh, we're also on Twitter at, uh, what is it, Playing With Power 88? <laughs> Yeah, on Twitter. And um, on Grindr, uh, we are under... <laughs> Mike's uh, mom. Yeah, right? Anyway. Oh, yeah, what is... Like, God. I don't know if it's as bad up in Canada, but, like, they got rid of Backpage down here in America, so, like, now every hooker is on all, like, the OkCupid and Plenty of Fish apps. So, like, you just constantly get pounded with, like, hooker invites now because they took away their ability to advertise online like sensibly so it's just been absolutely fucking clusterfuck the last couple of weeks which has just been you, great you, you, you get seven or eight children being sold on the internet and all of a sudden people get pissed off <sighs> they gotta ruin it for everyone but alright you know some of us actually take care of our, our of our of our online purchase children oh Jesus <laughs> alright everyone yeah. If you uh, somehow made it through to this point, I'm really sorry. But, uh... <laughs> and I'm Mike. <laughs> I'm done. And, and now you're playing with power. And now you're fucking with power. <laughs> now you're playing with power bottoms.